Good morning. My name is Reverend Cindy Layton, and I am blessed to be the pastor at Smithville First United Methodist Church in Smithville, Texas. During this unprecedented time of COVID-19, we have been, like so many, closed to worship in our sanctuary, but we have made a valiant effort to provide recorded worship every week for anyone who wishes to view them. They are available on YouTube, and you just look for Smithville First United Methodist Church in Smithville, Texas. And you can also go to our website at www.smithville-umc.org and you can find a link there to the worship times. We know that worshiping uh, electronically is not exactly as uh, what we would want to be doing at this time, but it is a blessing from the Lord that we are able to continue to worship together virtually through these videos. So welcome, may God bless you and, and keep you safe, amen. Good morning, it is good to see each of you here in the house of the Lord today. Today is the third Sunday of Lent and I want to, we'll begin our worship time together with the gathering People gather around Jesus as his reputation becomes known from town to town. As we gather, we too are yearning for presence, for peace, and for help. We have some announcements this morning. Um, the first one is one that we've had every week. The office is open Monday through Friday from 9 to 1. And uh, Leela, our secretary, is in there in that front office. I'm usually around somewhere except on Wednesday mornings yeah. until 10, but then after that I'm there. <laughs> and we invite you to come by the office if you need anything, if you want to talk to me, or if you just need somebody to talk to after being in seclusion for so long, we're available. But our biggest part of that announcement is, even after the 10th, we are asking everyone to wear a mask. If you come to any of our facilities, um, we want you with a mask on. When you come to worship, we need you with a mask on. Becky and I are the only two that don't have ours on because we're far away from you. But um, otherwise, we are truly um, observing our, our part of our United Methodist heritage where Wesley said, do no harm. And so until we know Maybe even past that. I'm not sure how that's going to work. But until we know everybody's had vaccines and all that, we are going to wear our masks. Okay? So, um, also, Elizabeth reminded me that we need to spring your clock forward. If you're one that'll do it at 2 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning, that's fine. But I usually set mine the night before. So set your clock on Sunday night an hour forward. Forward, spring forward. Or Saturday night. I mean, <laughs> Saturday night. Saturday night. Do that. This coming Saturday. Saturday. Okay? That way we'll all be here at church at the right time. All right. Um, I think those are our announcements for this morning, except that I do want you to know the Born Again Emporium was run this past week by uh, the United Methodist, by us. And thank you to all those who volunteered to be there. And they made about $4,500, something right around in there, uh, in one four hour period. Uh, that just it, it amazes me. <laughs> and so, for the time being, the Born Again Emporium is only open on Fridays um, and for that four hour time frame. I also want you to know that on Thursday, I think it was, Charlene got a phone call from the city saying that they were going to have a group of National Guardsmen here who would give shots to any of our homebound folks. And so we rushed around and tried to get lists. If we left you off, we apologize, but we were going through our brains of who we knew, you know, wasn't able to get out to go get shots and things. And so um, in Smithville, they gave shots to 106 people that were homebound, um, that are homebound. So I was so thankful for that. Yes. 
So that was good. And some of those were our own people, so that was a blessing. That was a blessing. And uh, Charlene and I, you know, she gets all these phone calls all the time that are like, we need it in an hour. You know, we need the information in an hour, and we managed to do that. So we were blessed to be able to help in that way. Let us begin our time of worship. As we approach, people approached and opened their lives to Jesus. We are drawn to the healer, opening our hearts with honesty about our lives and finding assurance that offers peace. Hear these words. We continue our Lenten season of recovery as we focus on health as essential to our spiritual lives. Those who collect beach glass often become like archaeologists. They see the markings on the glass and those little clues as to the story of the original piece. It often takes much time to bring out the truth behind it. This week, we acknowledge the power of truth-telling as a healing property. There are stories that have shaped each and every one of our lives, leaving us without the ability to see who we truly are in the eyes of God, and leaving us without the ability to speak the depth of our stories of struggles. We focus on the importance of recovery of mental and spiritual health today, reclaiming our sense of who we are and being able to proclaim new redemptive stories of divine truth. Let us continue with our opening prayer of confession. Before we pray, hear these words. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, and renew our holy vessels. And that the health of our minds deeply affects our physical and spiritual health. Let us pray. Centering and calming and divine breath of God. You gifted us with amazing minds capable of so many things. You gave us the ability to think and feel imbuing us with discernment of thought and emotion. Like our physical bodies, sometimes this aspect of ourselves is beleaguered. Too often we hide this, afraid of what others might think of our difficulties in managing or moving forward, even in the face of devastating circumstances. Too often we perpetuate the stigma of a less than perfect state of mind by shaming others and ourselves. Millennia of misunderstanding compounds our fear. We label and belittle, all the while turning the hatred upon ourselves, for no one is immune from troubles of the mind at some point. So many are suffering now, O oh God, weary and distraught, grieving and at the end of their rope. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss, and so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us, healer. Show us our capacity for compassion. Forgive our inattention. And move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In the silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Amen. I want you to look at somebody close to you, and today there's a lot of somebody's a little bit closer to you. Look at them, and one more person will say, the peace of Christ be with you. And the other one will answer, and also with you. So let us pass the peace of Christ in a socially distanced way this morning, okay? Amen. Amen. Would you?
Would you please stand for our opening hymn? As we are focusing on that spiritual and emotional um, healing, our opening hymn is Be Yay! Still My Soul. Oh, it stays on. Hardship. 
We pray for those who find themselves without access to adequate care, someone to talk to, or appropriate resources to steady their hearts and minds. We give thanks for those who are telling their stories, showing us how to open our hearts to help others, and offering ripples of healing in the community. We pray grateful thanks for progress towards holistic health care and the efforts of all who are working to destigmatize mental illness, making it easier to ask for and get the help so desperately needed. And we ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can help now and into the future. And now we lift our own prayer requests and praises before the Lord. Are there joys or concerns this morning? Anyone? Yes. Pray for TK. She's going through some serious testing Yes. TK is going to have some work uh, scans and things done tomorrow, I think. And so let us lift her up before the Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord. I received a prayer request for Frances McGilvery. She was one of the pillars, you know, around here for a long, long time. And after her husband. Um, went to be with the Lord. She moved to Holland, Texas, but still keeps in touch. And she fell on Wednesday and broke her femur. She's 92 years old. And she had surgery on Thursday and as of yesterday when her daughter contacted us, um, she was in a lot of pain after the surgery. So we asked prayers for Francis Lugilfrey. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Oh, and she is at the spot in White Hospital in Temple. Are there others this morning, joys or concerns? We do give thanks for all those who were able to receive uh, vaccines this past week. And uh, we say thanks be to God. Yes, ma'am. Well, I have a proud man a moment. Okay. Uh, my grandson, Easton, is a freshman on the uh, Bachelor of High School for basketball. Baseball team. They were playing in a tournament. The JV was playing in a tournament here Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and they ran out of pitchers. So they asked Big E to come pitch. He pitched all innings and they won the game. Wow. So well, we're very proud of our freshmen. Sad for Smithville, but good for your I don't freshmen. know that they played Smithville. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know who they played in the championship. Oh, okay. But at least they won. <laughs> well, that is great. And we congratulate him for his uh, good performance there. And we say thanks be to God. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Now, we do have another praise. Um, one of Becky's granddaughters is here, and she is a Girl Scout. And today is Girl Scout Sunday. Um, and so I just wanted to recognize her as participating in Girl Scouting, and we are thankful for that organization and all they do. And so we say thanks be to God. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Are there others? Yes. yes. Okay. Let us pray for Elizabeth's sister-in-law, Frances Gray, who is who has been diagnosed with cancer. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Any others? As we go before the Lord today, lift up all of those prayer requests that are on your hearts and minds. Oftentimes, some of them are so personal, we don't feel that we can share. But let's lift those up before the Lord. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we do thank you and praise you for this beautiful day that you have given to each of us to live and breathe and have our being in you. We thank you for the joy of gathering together in worship. And we praise you for we know, Lord, our experience has recently shown us that we should never assume that worshiping you in your sanctuary can happen. So we thank you 
for these days in which we are able to do so. We pray, O oh Lord, that all that is said and done during this time of worship would honor and glorify you. <coughs> and we thank you that we are able to lift our prayer requests directly to you, Lord, and we know you have shown us that you hear and answer in your perfect will and in your perfect timing. So we lift all of those who are in need of your healing touch as the great physician. We continue to lift Gordon Smith to you as he recovers from his surgery on his uh, foot and his heel. We lift all the others that have been named already, Lord. And we pray that you would be with them, each one, in their situation, oh Jesus. We lift to you those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for your peace that comes from your spirit and that just passes all understanding. And we lift to you this community of faith and we pray that you would help us to continue reaching out to those around us who are in need, Lord, that we may be the hands and feet of Jesus in any way we possibly can. We pray for our nation, our state, our county, our town. We pray that you would be with those who are in positions of authority, that you would bless them with wisdom and understanding, and that decisions would be made that help all the people. We love you. We place ourselves into your loving and healing, forgiving presence, Lord. And we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. At this time, we will receive our morning tithes and offerings. The ushers will come forward and um, they will have the plates and just pass through the aisle ways and you place your offerings into those offering plates. I thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. All during these months, um, whether we've been here or been apart, you have been faithful in your giving. And so I encourage you to continue, continue supporting um, this, your church, and the ministries of this church. And as we always say, or almost every Sunday, as a connectional church, part of what we give goes to other areas where uh, funding is needed to help those in need. So let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the ways in which you bless us each and every day. And we offer these gifts to you as an expression of our thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
sing. There is a bomb in Gilead. You could remain in your seats. We sang this a few weeks ago, but all during this season of healing during Lent, it is so appropriate. So let us join our voices together. Scripture. 
from Matthew 9, verses 27 through 33. Hear the word of the Lord. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. And while this is the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. So our focus this morning in our sermon is on those words of Jesus, do you believe? And also on this idea of telling your story. This week we are acknowledging the power of truth <coughs> as a healing property. You heard the quotes about telling stories and how important they are for you and for those who hear them. Your story can be very powerful. So today we are focusing on the importance of recovery of mental health and emotional health and reclaiming our sense of who we are and being able to proclaim new redemptive stories of our worth in the eyes of God. <laughs> our first week we spoke about physical and spiritual healing and then last week we were dealing with communal healing and how this church can be part of the healing <laughs> process for those who are members and those outside of our community. And today, we're focusing on that inward health issue um, and so many of the mental health issues that we have seen recently due to people being separated from each other and the pandemic and all of those things. Many of us have struggled with some level or other of depression and other mental issues as a result of being separated from the ones we love for such a long, long time. And the truth telling, the telling of our stories can be very healing. Your stories not only help you to heal when you tell them, but could help those who hear to heal. I have known quite a few people over the years who have been AA members and they have told me that the telling of their story when they gather together is crucial to the healing process and that you know hardly anybody gets away without telling their story and it has been proven throughout the years that that kind of participating in AA helps the members to be able to move forward in their process. And I shared a couple of weeks ago about my cancer diagnosis and when we were talking about physical healing. But part of what I want to share today is that when I first was diagnosed, other than my husband and my family members and a couple of people that I worked with at the church I was serving at the time, I just didn't want to talk about it for a long, long time. I mean, I was, I'm such a crybaby that, and I'll admit it, that when somebody would, you know, comes to me and says, oh, I'm so sorry, and you know, oh, that just gets me going, right? I mean, it just all comes out of my eyes. That's how I'm wired. And so I just, I, for a, for a while, I just didn't want, want people to know. 
because I knew that I would react emotionally to the sympathy and you know all of that. But after a while, after the Lord gave me that very clear message about you know Cindy one way or the other, you will make it through this. Either you will be healed physically or you will be healed <laughs> eternally. But one way or the other, you're going to make it through this. Then I started to realize the importance of telling my story because, as typically happens in a church setting, people started finding out anyway, even though I wasn't telling everybody. And eventually, it was amazing. Women started coming to me and sharing their stories. I'll never forget the 80 plus year old that came to me and said, Pastor, I had cancer. I don't know, it was like 45 or 50 years ago, she said, and here I am. Here I am. You don't know how healing that was, right? For her to share her story. And so then I began to share my story. And I had multiple, multiple ladies in different settings come to me that I had no idea that they had been through the same challenges with breast cancer. I had no idea. But they began to come out of the woodwork almost, you know, telling me, sharing their stories. And all of us together use those stories in our healing process. Our stories can be very powerful. And so, um, the two blind men in our scripture passage for today knew about Jesus. They had heard the stories of his healing power all over the place. Even though almost every time Jesus touched somebody, and it's in the scriptures, at least at the beginning, he would say, now don't tell anybody. But when something that amazing and that miraculous happens to somebody, we're just human, right? And so they would just step out of his presence and begin telling everybody. So these blind men had probably heard the stories of Jesus' ability to heal, and they already had faith that he could heal them. And they just couldn't be silent, though he had asked them to be or told them to be, once they were healed. They had to share, even though they had been instructed not to. That's how strongly they felt about what had happened to them. All of these healing stories in Matthew, and I would encourage you to go home and read through the book of Matthew. I'm right to the end of it in my personal devotional time. And every one of the Gospels was written to a different group of people. And Matthew was written for the Jewish population to prove to them that Jesus was and is the Messiah who he said he was. And so it, it gives you a different perspective than the other Gospels, even though many of the stories are the same stories. So I would encourage you to read. But Matthew represents, the, the healing stories in Matthew represent a bigger truth. The truth that God in Jesus has come to heal us all, spiritually and emotionally. Spiritually and emotionally. And to bring us out of the shadows and into the light. Now I want to just for a second say, I understand the difficulties when we see one person being healed of something and someone else not being healed. That is a hard situation. And all I can say is, as we pray, when we're asking for prayers for healing for people, is that God knows everything and we don't. And so God's perfect will and God's perfect timing is something we have to trust in, even in the midst of people who die. I mean, I've had loved ones die too, when everybody they knew and even people they didn't know were praying for them. It, it happens. 
and all of us will someday face that reality. But our emotional and, and spiritual healing is a given when we are committed to our Savior. Our stories are the ones we need to share, our stories, and not necessarily other people's stories. Because what happens when we start sharing other people's stories oftentimes is exactly like what used to happen as children when we would play telephone. You remember that game? The first person starts and they say something pretty simple. And by the time it got all the way around the circle, oh my word. It was a whole different, you know, it didn't even sound like the first message. And so when I'm talking about sharing your stories, unless you're reading a story that somebody wrote, you know, like you've got the detail, I would stick to your story. Share your story. Because it can certainly be painful in many ways when we hear that others have been telling our story and it's not exactly right or true. And so let us focus on our own personal story. So when we're sharing with others, stick to your own story about the Lord's work in your life. Our stories of healing and wholeness have so much power. These stories can help us to reclaim our sense of who we are in the Lord and can be redemptive as we realize our worth in the eyes of God. This can bring healing to our, our own minds and our own spirits as well as to the hearts and minds and spirits of those who hear. As we move into a time of Holy Communion. And as we share the story of what Jesus did for us, let us understand that that is part of your story. It is part of my story. And the redemptive power that the Lord has displayed in our lives can help others in many, many ways. So let us not forget to share those stories. As we begin the communion liturgy, know that I will be reading some things that are not printed on the screen, but it'll be very obvious when it is time for you to join in again. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take a moment for your own personal time of confession. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. In the beginning, you breathe life into raw materials, creating and animating containers of beauty and goodness. We, your holy vessels, were fired in the kiln of love until we shined with your light, susceptible to shattering, 
we find ourselves broken, unable at times to remember your promise of repair. You remind us time and again that though broken, we are held in your presence and made whole by your grace. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ holy vessel of divine presence on earth. Your spirit anointed him as a container of grace in the form of preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, and announcing that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those considered too broken for company. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and gave birth to the path of healing and recovery, delivered us from our despair and isolation, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. We are not alone. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I hear packages opening. This is the blessing over the elements and then we will partake of them together in just a moment. The next, the next one. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Now that cup, my friends, was the third cup in four cups that they would be drinking out of during that Passover meal last night. And that third cup was the cup of redemption. The cup of redemption. And that's all, you know, that's a lot of what we've been speaking to today. He took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of, fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Pull by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So open the cellophane on the top and take a little piece of the wafer. The body of Christ, broken for you and for many. Thanks be to God. Take and eat. The 
blood of Christ, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, drink and give thanks. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us join it together in the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The words of Jesus we heard in this week's healing story were, Do you believe I am able to do this? Jesus' question invites us to consider our own belief in transformation. He invites us to step into a renewed vision of our lives, to speak into being a new story, not be bound by the stories of the past, inscribed upon us by others that may be oppressing and limiting us. Beach glass is usually somewhat cloudy when dry. When it comes into contact with water, it becomes clear and bright. Let this act be a prayer for clarity. Ask for a new way to see the struggles you may be experiencing. Ask for understanding and a way forward. So, each week, we look at the reaction, reaction of the crowd in the healing story. This week, the crowd was amazed and cried out that nothing like it had ever been seen before. How interesting that the crowd is seeing something for the first time, just like the blind man or the blind men are brought to sight. Could it be that this is as important to the story as the ones who received physical healing? How could we open our eyes figuratively in new ways? And what do we need to envision anew? These are questions to think about. Now go with confidence that the one who is living water is already cleansing, renewing, and clarifying our lives recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Do you believe it is possible? And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Let us stand and join in our last song together. <coughs> 